guys and welcome back to my channel. If you haven't seen me before, my name is Lara. I'm a second year geography and education student at Liverpool Hope. And this is my tectonic processes and hazards revision series. However, if you're not doing exams at the moment, that is still amazing. You can still learn things, so stick around. If this is your first time and you haven't subscribed, please do. My goal is this year to reach a thousand subscribers by December. So if you could hit that subscribe button, I'd really appreciate it. It'd really help me out. And if you are a student and really find this useful, please share it with someone, maybe with your teachers so that they can share it. Share it in your geography group chat. Hopefully some people will enjoy it. But without further ado, let's get into this video. This is still in inquiry question three, which is how successful is the management of tectonic hazards and disasters? Today, we will be focusing on multiple hazard zones, multiple natural hazards. Most countries face some kind of hazard, whether it be tectonic in nature or hydrometeorological, but some countries are exposed to multiple natural hazards. These places are known as multiple hazard zones or a disaster hotspot. Identifying them is important as it helps decision makers or governments understand a region's hazards, set priorities for action and decide on how to assign resources. These areas may also receive more support from international agencies as well as more resources with disaster planning and prevention. What are hydrometeorological hazards? They are natural hazards caused by climate processes including droughts, floods, hurricanes and storms. Today we're going to be focusing on the case study of the Philippines, which is a multiple hazard zone. The Philippines is one of the most disaster prone countries in the world. It sits across a major convergent plate boundary, so is at risk from both volcanoes and earthquakes. Its northern and eastern coasts face the Pacific, which is the most tsunami prone ocean in the world. It lies within Southeast Asia's major typhoon belt. There are not only strong winds, but heavy rainfall, which increases the risk of flooding and landslides. It also has a tropical monsoon climate, so is often exposed to heavy rainfall. The Philippines have 47 volcanoes, 22 of which are active, and over 30% of the population live within 30 kilometers of a volcano. Landslides are common due to the steep topography of the volcanic sides and there are high levels of deforestation and high rainfall. Vulnerability. This is due to a combination of a growing population, rapid urbanisation and poverty. These also increase the Philippines' vulnerability to hazard events. It's a rapidly developing country. Its development and a fast growing population has led to urbanisation and a high population density. Most of the poor live in coastal areas where sea surges, flooding and tsunamis are made worse by the poorly constructed housing and infrastructure. 25% of the population live in poverty. The challenge of multiple hazards. One hazard can increase or cause other hazards. An earthquake in the Philippines in 2006 killed 15 people, injured 100 people and damaged or destroyed 800 buildings. This generated a local tsunami, which was three meters high. It created landslides, which breached the volcano wall, which fell into a lake, creating a flood that washed away hundreds of houses. Different disaster events happening in a short space of time can leave communities and governments having to deal with a new disaster. Just as they're trying to recover from the last one, this drains resources, and stretches the ability of the emergency services to respond. That is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. It was another short one, but I hope you learned something new. If you did enjoy, please like this video. It really helped, really, really helps me out. And please subscribe down below. I will see you same time, same place next week. Next week we'll be discussing hazard management theoretical cycles. So a bit bigger of a concept, but hopefully it'll be useful. So I will see you next week. Bye guys. Thank you.